is like when you're working alone in your studio, it's such, it's an amazing process and you learn so much about who you are and you get into this really intense thought process, but it can be really isolating and alienating in a way as well. And there can be a way of feeling that that work starts to lack a connection to life as it's lived, you know? And so when I'm working on projects with people and working on projects collaboratively, there's something else that happens whereby all of these kind of creative energies are coming together and all of these lives become weaved into the process. It started with me pasting outside and then I really felt like I wanted to make something which was part of the world, like just very literally, which became part of my life and my environment and my city and which had like an integral with the city aspect to it. And so that process like just kept changing and growing and it would leap from one thing to another as you would start to think about different ways to interact with things. You start to get that feeling of like what of what happens when a group of people gets together to make something and what happens when you create really absurdist kind of joyful spaces in the middle of our everyday lives and how that disruption creates something that's like just tremendously joyful and kind of amazing, you know, and and surreal and strange and slightly confrontational and all the things that it is. Projects like the boats and like the work in Haiti are other sort of structures to create connectedness. I remember when I started, I, I definitely had that feeling of like, oh, nobody's gonna understand this. People are gonna be like, what the hell are you doing? You fucking boat hippie, <laughs> you know, and they did and they do. But the people also really understood that I was trying to constantly create unconventional spaces and contexts and to make things that showed up in people's lives fully formed in a way that kind of maybe makes the world seem a little bit larger or more surprising than you thought it was. You know, just all of the generosity and the real, the real kind of like amazing connection that happened with people along the river was one of, was one of those moments that I knew I wanted to find a way to deepen that sort of interaction. found this community we we knew that that we had the kind of first piece that made sense was that we wanted a very small group to work with that we could have a, an ongoing relationship with so our main partner here has been the Mango Growers Association um, and they've been our partner in a lot of ways and they are kind of like our main vehicle for communication. But there's a relationship between the municipalities and getting permission to build and a lot of the complicated issues of land rights that are navigated between us and the Mango Growers Association because they are the people of this village and they're sort of the organized body here. You know, through working with them, we're able to know that we have a solid relationship um, with where we're building and uh, with all the permissions and things that we need. Um, and more, I think more than that, it's that it's that sort of back to that issue about community and trust. That like they are the organization that you know they're really trying to do a lot of good things for this community. They're trying to sort of bring a kind of a consciousness to you know, people getting organized and bettering their lives. And so when we met them, we were like, okay, this is awesome. Like what you guys are doing is exactly the kind of partner that we would like to have because we're trying to think in that way as well. We met with some of the people from the Mango Growers Association, just casually, we just met them. And we spoke about our idea and they were like, yeah, cool, awesome, we have wanted a community center for a while, you know, we get together, we have meetings, we would love to have a place to meet. Pretty immediately there was three ideas. First, computer lab. Uh, we want access to technology, we want access to information, and that's, that's what the internet can do for a community that doesn't have any electricity. The second use is to use it as like, you know, some sort of a gallery space or viewing space for all the sculpture that's there. Sixty percent of the community are sculptors that make just beautiful work. Another third idea that we're still working on is, is making it a hub of information and uh, possibly a hub of, of trained workers 
specifically around alternative building techniques. It's only an architect's drawing. Here is the medium one, so big, small, medium. We started with the community center, which is this kind of very large kind of communal space. It's a triple dome that comes together into a vault. It's all open. It's really meant to to feel kind of like a very a very open and welcoming kind of a space. And then there will be doors, windows, extra painting, decoration. I get the pot, fenet, peinture, and then decoration to the garage. But this is the first part how we will build it. Combi. I think it literally translates to together. It's this mentality of working together for the individual. And it's a way of getting stuff done that you would individually never be able to do. But when you come together and work for each other, with each other, so much more is possible. We also wanted to finance the project through the artistic community. There was a lot of money that was coming in through aid and we felt that that money should be directed directly towards aid organizations, but that we should sort of present ourselves as who we were, which is a group of artists who wanted to think creatively and also think about beauty and kind of soulfulness in our building process, and that anyone who was interested in supporting that would kind of support us directly. And so we sold artwork. We also received a Rockefeller Foundation grant, which was really awesome and was the thing that got us back down here this last time. So there are various people sort of pitching in, all from the artistic community who are saying, you know, we're artists and we also want to be involved. We're really glad that you guys are doing it in a hands-on way and we're going to do it in the way that we can. Si comme si l'am café on ca comme ça pour compte moi. Je t'a venir pour construire là, me dit comme si l'am ca présenté tête moi comme un boss. Actually, what I think really meant a lot to people was that we came back. Um, I really felt a, an even deeper warmth this time because people were like, oh, you didn't just show up, do one thing, not even finish it, and then leave. Like, this is a continuing relationship. You said you would come back, you came back. You said you would continue building, you continued building. Um, and that's really awesome. That was an amazing, an amazing feeling. <laughs> This, it's this kind of incredible way to grow. Um, and so I've had moments, you know, in Haiti where Monique was saying, like, thank you so much for this house. And I felt that I had to say, thank you for the opportunity to build this, to learn this, to see a vision executed. Here's this community of people that has this long-term connection to this place, um, who has kind of embraced us and given us the ability to participate in that as well. Um, and to watch the kids grow up and to come back year after year. Um, and, uh, and so I think that for me to learn about that sense of commitment and the sense of like the longevity of ideas and about how things become embraced into people's lives is, is a really a big gift.